Greetings, gentlemen. Ever noticed a mysterious midday slump where your energy and focus seem to just nosedive? Well, there's an actual scientific reason for this phenomenon, and it drastically affects your decision-making and productivity. Stick around, because in today's session, I'm about to delve into how this knowledge can transform the way you handle your day for peak performance. Let's get right into it. Imagine you're at the doctors for surgery, or a student gearing up for exams, or better yet, a CEO about to address shareholders. There's a certain time of day, between 2 p.m. and 4 p.m., when the risk for mishaps surges astronomically. Yes, during this perplexing window, otherwise known as the Bermuda Triangle of the day, your sharp intelligence, sound judgment, and productivity don't just dip, they take a nosedive. So why does this happen? It all boils down to your circadian rhythm. That's the internal clock inside your brain orchestrating a symphony of hormones, like cortisol and melatonin, which gently nudge you awake in the morning and lull you to sleep at night. Your focus and mental prowess also ebb and flow in sync with this rhythm, peaking, plummeting, and then rebounding over 16 waking hours. The treacherous trough, usually hitting us 7 to 8 hours after sunrise, is the prime culprit behind this daytime lull. And the ultimate weapon against it? A nap. Yes, a simple, short nap has the power to smooth out the mental nicks and scratches of the day, boosting your alertness for a whopping 3 hours. Imagine that, just a brief 10 to 20 minute snooze can reinvigorate you that much. Dan Pink, in his enlightening body of work, champions this practice and takes it up a notch with a nappuccino a power combo of caffeine and napping. Chug a coffee, set a 20 minute timer, and by the time you're up, the caffeine kicks in. It's like a one-two punch to grogginess, catapulting you back into high gear. Now, I get it, not everyone can sneak in a siesta at work. If that's the case, use the trough for mundane, no-brainer activities. For those crucial moments where a nap is off the table and important tasks demand your attention, follow a foolproof checklist to sidestep the pitfalls of the trough. To truly master your calendar, align your tasks with your cognitive peaks. Logical, left-brain work like crunching numbers or legal analysis. Tackle these in the morning, pre-trough. Creative, right-brain work, such as brainstorming and design. Save these post-trough tasks for when your rebound has you bouncing back with fresh insight. For those nighttime owls among you, the late chronotypes constituting about a quarter of the population, your creative surge happens in the AM, while the logical grind suits your PM energies. Knowing your circadian rhythm and planning tasks accordingly means doing the right work at the right time. Gentlemen, it's not just about working hard, it's about working smart. Understanding your biological clock can be a game changer for productivity and success. Let's take this knowledge and dominate our schedules, not be at their mercy. Now, if this talk piqued your curiosity and you're ready to seize control of your time for max productivity, hit that subscribe button, smash the like, and tap the notification bell. Doing so will ensure you're not only informed but primed to make the moves that count. In closing, I'd love to know what strategies you're going to implement to leverage this wisdom. And remember, if you've gleaned significant value from today's talk, feel free to show appreciation with a gratuity via the link in the description, proportional to the value you've received. Stay powerful, stay purposeful, and as always, remain prodigious in your pursuits. Welcome to a world where the chase for love transcends cinematic screens and sets sail into our own lives. Imagine this. You're the protagonist in your own rom-com, tirelessly pursuing the woman of your dreams amid obstacles that range from existing boyfriends to her initial disinterest. Picture the final scene, where she finally reciprocates your affection, and together, you disappear into the sunset. This is the narrative many of us cling to, isn't it? But here's a twist. What if she's not interested, and your happy ending is just an illusion? Let me clarify something vital. Understanding when to persist and when to respectfully step back is crucial in the nuanced world of modern dating. When a woman vocalizes her disinterest, it's imperative that we listen and respect her boundaries. No means no, gentlemen. If she declines your invitation for a date, it's essential to honor her decision. It isn't about you, it's about allowing her the space to make her choices freely. Should you completely vanish into the abyss after facing rejection? Far from it. Stay amicable. Give her the reins. If there's a possibility for romance in the future, let it emerge naturally. Remember, a woman empowered to make her choices is more likely to venture forward when she's ready. Onto a vital point, when the pursuit starts to chip away at your self-esteem. If each rejection feels like a personal blow, 
and you find yourself pressing on just to mend your bruised ego, it's time to reevaluate. Don't let the hunt for affection define your self-worth. Consider this, are you chasing her for genuine connection, or is it a challenge against rejection you're trying to win? It's time to redirect your energy. Improve yourself, sharpen your skills, be it at the gym, in your career, or with your social circle. Forge a self-image that's not at the mercy of someone else's acceptance. Now, onto the next point, the impact she has on your mood. A true partner enhances your life, they don't drag it down. If you find yourself constantly fretting over a single text or seething in anxiety, then my friend, it's a red flag. Seek someone who nurtures your confidence, shares waves of laughter with you, and supports you in every stride. Let's not underestimate the power of your social circle. Your friends, the trusty third-party observers, often spot red flags before you do. If you hear a collective consensus advising you to step back, lend them your ears. They care for you and can discern when a relationship is draining rather than fulfilling you. And now, the grand finale of reasons, the imbalance. When chasing her becomes your primary focus, edging out your career, dreams, and even loved ones, it's an SOS signal. Catalog the hours of your day. Are you investing more energy in deciphering mixed signals than in cementing your legacy? Life moves swiftly, don't spend it overanalyzing a fleeting moment. Redirect your zeal to other endeavors, and soon enough, either the sting of rejection will fade or a new chapter will commence with someone who champions your every ambition. So gents, exhibit patience, respect, and place your life's goals and self-esteem at the helm. Invest in yourself and the right connections will follow. And if you find camaraderie in this content, consider showing your support with a tip, a gesture to match the value you've gleaned from our discourse. Remember, your subscription to this channel, liking this video, and ringing the notification bell could very well set you on the path to recognizing these scenarios in your own life and making the sage decision to move forward with wisdom and emotional intelligence. Let's spark the discussion. What actions will you take from today's journey into love's intricate maze? Greetings everyone! Today we're delving into the captivating life of someone who wore more hats than a milliner Jerry Weintraub. His autobiographical trove When I Stop Talking, You'll Know I'm Dead, is a treasure chest of adventurous tales from ruling over box office hits like The Karate Kid to rocking the music world with icons like John Denver and Frank Sinatra. He was a friend to presidents, a showman to the masses, and most intriguingly, an entrepreneur at heart. Today, we're scrutinizing two pivotal moments from his youth and later career that offer stellar advice for the ambitious amongst Ushi's first entrepreneurial venture and his epic feat of taking Elvis Presley on tour. Let's journey back to Weintraub's early forays into business, sparked by mere observation and opportunity. Picture a young Jerry, perched on a fire escape, as the working men bustled home clad with freshly pressed suits from the local dry cleaner. Spotting an opening in the market, Jerry suggested to the owner of the dry cleaners to extend their service further by delivering the garments. This would afford the workers precious time with their families. With only tips as his income, Weintraub seized another chance upon noticing customers also required laundry services. Slyly executing a strategic double delivery to maximize his earnings, he unwittingly set in motion his entrepreneurial ethos. The guiding principles we extract from this venture are timeless. One. Convenience is a marketable commodity. People will pay for ease in their busy lives. 2. Never pass on a pitch. Your next opportunity might just be a conversation away. 3. Personal service is not only a commitment to your work but also a way to build a reputation. 4. Efficiency in services rendered means never settling for a single reward where multiple are possible. Now, let's fast forward to Jerry's bravura moment. The year is the mid-1960s. Envision Weintraub, stirred from sleep by a dream so vivid, it shows him a marquee gleaming with the words, Jerry Weintraub presents Elvis Presley at Madison Square Garden. This emboldened vision impels him to chase the dream, leading to repeated calls to the indomitable Colonel Tom Parker. Persistence became his second skin. Day after day, his calls interwove his fate with the king of rock and roll himself. When Parker finally relented, it set a stopwatch on Weintraub's hustle for a hefty $1 million. Imagine the heart-pounding suspense as Weintraub, under the gun, rouses support from an old friend connected to a wealthy radio magnate and Elvis aficionado. The deal clinches, weaving a sequence in history that none could unravel. The meaty wisdom from Jerry's unparalleled maneuvering when confronted with an obstacle is as such. 1. Persistence isn't just a strategy, but a battle cry. The winds of success are at the back of the steadfast. 2. 
Here, no, not as rejection, but as a siren's call to charm even louder. 3. Victory often emerges from the ashes of repeated attempts. It rarely greets you at the outset. 4. Tirelessly pounding on the door of opportunity may eventually break the hinges. If Weintraub's tenacity teaches us anything, it's that the pulsing heart of success is resilience. Apply these lessons to your daily battles, and you program your own marquee of achievements. Now, this is where I reveal how this relates directly to your life. With intelligent wit and unbending determination, many of you have the potential to write your saga of triumphs. Whether it's diving into the deep end of investments, crafting a tight-knit digital marketing strategy, or mastering the art of modern dating, the crux lies in unwavering persistence and the ability to spot and seize opportunities. Regale me with your stories in the comments below. What actions are you taking right now that mirror the unstoppable spirit of Jerry Weintraub? And just before you go into action mode, consider this. Subscribing to the channel is like aligning with the mindset of success being the first to grab onto robust personal finance tips, exclusive entrepreneurial strategies, and unique personal development hacks. Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and position yourself in the league of extraordinary gentlemen who plot their course with a compass of wisdom. If you found this voyage through the life lessons of Jerry Weintraub invaluable, and it stirs you to aspire and hustle with an iron will, consider this an opportunity to tip in reflection of the value bestowed. Find the link below and remember, every act that shapes your empire of success starts with a step forward. Are you ready to step up?